The Prisoner's Dilemma Once upon a time in the Romanian plains lived two crooks, Anthony and Henry. Together they hit upon a plan to rob the royal treasury of its wealth. The duo were almost successful in the misventure had it not been for the long long hands of the law. Poor Anthony and Henry landed themselves in the police custody. The police officer Mr. Thompson locks them up in separate cells and says they'd be better off cooperating with him. He makes the same deal to both of them. To Anthony he says, If your friend confesses and you remain adamant, you'll rot here for five years and he'll be let off in a year. On the other hand, if you confess and he doesn't, you can spend one year here and fly away. He'll be our guest for five years. If both of you refuse to speak, we'll still manage to host you for two years each. But if both of you confess, then I'm sorry, you remain inside for four years each. Now, Anthony knows that Mr. Thompson has spelled out the same conditions to Henry and the same is true of Henry's knowledge. On the screen you can see now a schematic representation of the dilemma faced by the true prisoners. From Anthony's viewpoint, if Henry decides to confess, the better strategy for him would be to give in. And even if Henry remains silent, it would still make sense for Anthony to confess. So we see, irrespective of the other prisoner's move, Anthony would be more intelligent in speaking out rather than not. It doesn't require a Sherlock Holmes to figure out that similarly, the best individual choice for Henry would be to confess. Where are we now? Both Anthony and Henry end up confessing and treat themselves to a four-year sentence. The tragedy of the pair is, they could have both chosen to remain silent and got their freedom in just two years time. But in their quest for maximizing their personal gains, they end up in a situation worse off. Fun, isn't it? Are you as amazed by this game as we are? Problems like these and those of similar nature are dealt in a broad area called game theory. Remember John Nash, a beautiful mind? Hey, you guys still listening right? We now show how the same dilemma arises in a situation much more concrete. Of course, we are well aware you people spend a lot of constructive time chatting with your friends. Transfer of electronic messages between users living in distant geographical locations is done through certain nodal points. As analogous to our previous story, Anthony and Henry are two shrewd businessmen providing internet connection services. They are always keen to minimize their own costs in transferring a message within their area of operation, thereby routing it through the nearest nodal point possible. We have before us two sets of friends trying to send messages to each other. Sid, who has subscribed to Anthony's services, sends a hi to his friend Ria, whose home is situated in Henry's domain. Now from the point of origin of the message, Anthony can choose to route the message to the upper nodal point, incurring a cost of two units himself. Ria being too close to the nodal point, Henry incurs zero cost in transferring the message from the nodal point to Ria's desktop within his region. But Anthony would like to be clever and route Sid's message to the lower nodal point, thus incurring a cost of only one unit himself. While the conventions of the internet demand that Henry must transfer the message from this point to Ria, even if that means a cost of 3 units to him. The same one-upmanship game 
would again be played if Apoor wants to send some message to his friend Kriti. Hence, for a total of two messages to be exchanged and transferred across the two operators' domain, the two could have been wiser and succeeded to deliver the messages in two units cost each. But, because of the sheer greed, they end up suffering a cost of four units each. So dear patient listener, we see that the same prisoner's dilemma is being played out in this everyday world scenario. This is what has been termed as the tragedy of the commons. In the words of the great Greek philosopher Aristotle, for that which is common to the greatest number has the least care bestowed upon it. Everyone thinks chiefly of his own hardly at all of the common interest. Everybody is more inclined to neglect the duty which he expects another to fulfill.